Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for Friday, March 30th, 2018. This is episode 59. And today we're going to talk about tracking ServiceNow incidents with Microsoft Flow. And just as a reminder, even though I am a Microsoft employee, the opinions expressed in this video are my own. So in this episode, we're going to talk about a recent John and Kent video. Also going to talk a little bit about a new feature I'm learning on my personal blog called PM on Call. We'll get right into the heart of the content, which is tracking ServiceNow incidents. And finally, we're going to touch on the upcoming Integrate 2018 conference occurring in London in early June. If you, may, if you follow John and or myself, you may have run into this particular video that we were promoting on Twitter called Dude, Where's My Car? And really what we're trying to do here is have some fun. We're trying to take some sort of pop culture use cases and then actually make them into a solution that actually can be very practical. So while we are having fun around trying to find John's vehicle while getting lost at the mall, there's many real world applications of using this technology, which in this case was using a flow mobile button and also using the GPS on the phone in order to plot out map coordinates in order to track something. So in this case, we're tracking our car versus our proximity but you would also have opportunities to use this if you were, say, a courier or you as an employee wanted to track your mileage. There's so many applications of this technology, and we wrapped it up in a fun little video, and you can find it on John's YouTube channel. If you don't follow John, feel free to follow him at PNW Adventure Guy on Twitter. So next up is PM on Call. So it's actually been a while since I've blogged on my personal blog, which is www.middlewareinthecloud.com and the idea really came about from just requests that we get as PMs. Uh, we get a lot of requests whether they be from internal customers, say other product groups or other business units inside of our company or it can come from customers. You know so this is a fairly regular occurrence where you get these types of questions and it's really been sort of um, bothering me that I haven't had a chance to document these things because as you know, one way to scale your knowledge is to actually put it out there on the web so that other people can find it. So that if you run into that question again, you don't have to type out a big long email. Instead, you can just give people a link to a blog post where they can actually walk through it. And certainly if they have additional questions, they can come back to you. So the first post in this series is around parsing JSON email attachments. So I will leave you with this link where you can actually go in and find the solution in more detail. I've got a whole backlog of other posts that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to try to get another one out this weekend, uh, but we'll see how things go. All right, so into the main content. So today we're going to talk about ServiceNow. So for those of you that may not be familiar with ServiceNow, it is has its roots in IT service management, um, but certainly the organization is trying to get more involved in enterprise service management. So you can think of it as, as, as historically a help desk tool, uh, but now it's becoming so much more than that. Really any sort of scenario where you have someone providing a service and you want to be able to track that work, ServiceNow is a potential solution. So at the previous organization that I was at, we were using ServiceNow, uh, certainly within our IT organization, but we actually started to use it in other business units. For example, facilities. Uh, we did have some tenants in our building that we owned and we were providing a service to them. So this was a, an opportunity for our tenants to interact with our facilities folks through this, this medium. In addition, HR was another business function that uh, where they had a lot of like this intake of work and you wanted to be able to track it and it was a good candidate. And then even in our um, some of our other business units as well, we were able to use this to track work. ServiceNow is something that is supported inside of the Microsoft Flow and Logic Apps platform. I had a, created a template previously, and this is the Flow button to ServiceNow incidents where you could actually deploy buttons within your organization that allows an end user to quickly create a ticket. Uh, a great scenario would be if there's a, a piece of equipment malfunctioning in, say, a meeting room, and you don't necessarily want to to pull out your laptop or you may not have a laptop with you in order to log a ticket you can really provide a few different inputs and go ahead and submit that ticket to ServiceNow. Now another use case I showed in an earlier 
episode of Middleware Friday was using physical buttons to actually create incidents inside of ServiceNow as well. And in this case, that was the BTTN physical button. And it's actually one of the most watched videos of this whole Middleware Friday series. So I know it was, it was quite popular. But we want to shift focus for this particular episode. Now, in the past, we've talked about writing into ServiceNow. Well, now we're going to talk about reading from ServiceNow. So certainly, if you've ever managed a team or managed a queue within, say, an IT department, I'm sure you've got the question of how many tickets did we get today? So for example, perhaps you've just rolled out a new piece of software, a new piece of hardware, and that your VP comes by and says, you know, how many tickets do we have? And you want to be able to have that information at your fingertips. Well, why not actually go use flow and a flow button in order to retrieve that information? In addition, we can also publish this information to Microsoft Teams as well. Now in this demo, I'm gonna use a button, but certainly this could be any other trigger that would actually go ahead and invoke this. Perhaps it's run on a schedule. Maybe every day, you know, at four o'clock before people leave, you wanna see how many open tickets exist inside of your queue. Well, you could go ahead and schedule this specific process and have it published to a broad, wide variety of channels, whether that be email, SharePoint list, a Power BI dashboard, or certainly Microsoft Teams is a good option as well. So let's go ahead and get into the demo. All right, so here we are. I've got my air server up and running. I'm on my iOS device. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Flow mobile application. I will then ensure I'm on the buttons screen and I can go ahead and scroll down and see I have a button called ServiceNow Open Tickets. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and there's basically two parameters I need to provide. One would be the assignment group or essentially what people may refer to as a queue. So in this example, we're gonna use network. I wanna see what's in the network queue and I wanna see the tickets that have occurred within the past day. So I'll go ahead and click done and that will run and we'll see that it's started. All right, now if we go ahead and open up the email where this digest got sent, we'll see that 759, 759, here it is. Let's go ahead and open it up. And we will discover that we've had four tickets logged today. We can see the open date, we can see the severity, so one, two, three, and we can go ahead and see what people's descriptions are. And in this case, it looks like we have an employee named Derek Jeter, who uh, looks like he might be doing uh, a little bit of time off from work in order to watch baseball. So today is opening day for Major League Baseball in Canada and the United States. And here it looks like uh, Derek has some network connectivity challenges while trying to stream some baseball games. But uh, that's sort of uh, a moot point. But here's essentially a digest. And so we can go ahead and change that parameter if we wanted and actually get you know, however many days we want and have those tickets sent to us. So let's go ahead and see how this was actually built. And head over to Microsoft Flow. In the Maker Portal, we'll go ahead and edit. And we'll scroll to the top. So this is a manual trigger of flow, so essentially a flow button. I have the opportunity to create a list of items. And what I've done here is I've, I've mapped out the display names that exist inside of ServiceNow and ensure that they've, they align with what I'm going to provide in the mobile application. I'm also going to expose a days field where I want to capture a number of days back that will actually look for tickets. Now I'm going to initialize an array um, and the reason for this is we have some looping that we're going to have to do inside of ServiceNow and we're going to want to append to this specific array. Now with ServiceNow it's kind of like Dynamics, CRM or Salesforce where you essentially have entities or what they call tables. And what you'll find is that these tables will refer or have relationships with other tables. So it's never as simple as going after just one table typically when you want to retrieve data because what's going to happen is you're going to get back a bunch of references for another table and you're going to have to then go fetch that table. So if you've done integration with those other types of CRM platforms, this will be a fairly familiar concept for you. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I use the list records action, I've gone ahead and renamed it here, as part of the ServiceNow connector. 
Now in this case, I have the ability to use a query language. So this is something that is, to my knowledge, specific to ServiceNow. It feels a little bit like OData, um, but it is different. As you can see by the example here, they're using carrots and they've got order by and they're not using spaces in order to concatenate all of these different statements together. So not super difficult to use, but certainly if you try this on your own, you're probably going to fail the first time you try to connect to ServiceNow. And in this specific example, what I want to do is I want to query where the name is equal to the assignment group. And the assignment group is what's been passed in from our Flow mobile application. So next what we want to do is we want to go ahead and list open incidents. And we're going to use a query here um, in order to go ahead and do that. And now this is in a loop um, in part due to the fact that this is called list assignment groups. We, we know that only one record is going to be returned back, but basically it's, it is in a loop. And what we need to do then is we want to provide another query. And in this case, the query is going to be, we're going to say, was the ticket created on greater than days ago end? And this is where we're going to pass in our value where we said one. So basically, was this created newer than a day ago? The other thing we're going to do is we're going to then pull in the assignment group because we don't want to bring back all tickets. We want to only bring back the tickets related to our assignment group. And this is an example of that reference ID that I was talking about. This is going to be returned back from our previous call where we get the assignment group. And then we're going to essentially get this long, ugly reference ID, what's commonly referred to as sys ID whenever you are in the master table for the entity within ServiceNow. We also want to get the open tickets and that's where we're going to use incident underscore state equals one. And then what we want to do is order by severity. This was why we saw the tickets in the email all ordered by their respective severity. Okay, so this is going to give us the open incident. However, it's not going to give us a friendly name for who owns the ticket. So now what we have to go ahead and do is we have to loop through the, the users table. So record type user. And we also need to provide, um, in this case, it's a single user. So this is just a get record. And so we only, we know that only one is going to be returned, but this is where we can go ahead and use the caller. And so similarly from the incidents response, we're going to go ahead and get the reference ID for the user that actually logged the call, but we're not going to get the friendly display name. And that's the goal of this specific action. So this is why I need to create an array because I need to essentially aggregate data from three different calls that have been made. One was the assignment group, one was the incident itself, and the third one was the user. So here I'm going to go ahead and construct an array node and this is going to be JSON, and I'm basically going to pull in data values from the previous steps in the actual workflow itself from ServiceNow. And as you can see, ServiceNow is rather rich when it comes to fields and attributes that exist within these different tables. So there's no shortage of data coming back. But now I have a neat little package, something that is easy to digest when I send it off to an end user. So the next step I want to do is go ahead and create an HTML table. I'm going to just include headers and use the automatic columns. And then I'm going to use the parallel feature. Uh, so here, if you go ahead and you can add a parallel branch. Uh, I didn't have to use this. I just wanted to make people aware of this. This is something that is rather new. And it's this idea that we're going to process um, these two different streams uh, concurrently. And, you know, historically, whenever you create um, you know, drag actions onto your canvas, they run sequentially. And it was just to prove that you can actually run some of these things in parallel. Now, we're going to go ahead and send an email. And here I'm using just some CSS styling and going to use the output from the create HTML action. And then next, we're going to go ahead and provide or perform a switch statement on the assignment group where we can actually then go ahead and publish a message to a Microsoft team. 
if I'm using the same HTML outputs, I'm using the same um, CSS classes, and if we go over to Microsoft Teams, and we head to Service Desk Network, and scroll down 7.59 p.m., we can actually see uh, the incidents that were submitted, much like we saw in the email. So I probably could go ahead and clean this up a little bit, but for the purpose of this demo, I think you get the point. Now, let's just go back into Flow itself, and I'll just, just for you, those of you that might be wondering what I'm talking about with all those reference IDs, I will just give you a very quick look at that. So here we go, there's assignment groups. So this would be uh, the manager of that group. This would be their reference ID. Here's the sys ID, so the actual ID for the group itself. So we use that in the next step. And so if we head over to list open incidents, we will see this assignment group right here, which matches from up here. And then let's go ahead and head into to get the ticket submitter. You know, this is the value that was passed in from the incident itself. And then what will happen is we can go ahead and get the name or the friendly display name. So that's how you have to link all of these things together, which is going to force you to use loops. But the good news is if you were to write this using code, you'd be actually writing a fair bit of code in order to mash all of this stuff up. So flow greatly improves your productivity from that perspective. All right, next up, let's talk about Integrate 2018. This is in London, England from June 4th to 6th. We'll go ahead and click on the link. There are a couple days left before the end of Early Bird. Uh, so I suggest that you go ahead and register shortly. It ends March 31st, which is in two days. Um, otherwise, it'll be an additional 100 pounds, um, but it's still a pretty good deal. And uh, from what I have heard, their uh, registration is going really well. This may be the largest Integrate ever, uh, so we'll see. But uh, I think there's going to be a good show. Here's the speaker list. Uh, you can see I'm right here. Uh, this year I'm going to be talking about Microsoft Flow. But we've got a lot of representation from other product groups inside of Microsoft. So naturally the Logic Apps folks, uh, Azure Functions with Jeff. Uh, Vlad from API Management, Dan from the Azure Messaging team, uh, Paul Larson from the BizTalk team. Uh, we've got some um, internal folks as well that uh, basically build integrated solutions for Microsoft itself. Uh, so you can learn how Microsoft manages all of these different technologies internally when you're doing this at scale. And that's something that I've learned recently from working at Microsoft is that the scale of Microsoft internally as a business is fairly phenomenal. So there's always good things to learn from that perspective. And then certainly we've also got MVPs and we've got some new faces uh, as well. So I think there's a, a good mix of everything at this particular event. I don't think you can go wrong. So I'd encourage you to go ahead and sign up for it. So thanks for watching this episode of Middleware Friday. Steph Jan will be up next week. And I also want to thank BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. So take care, enjoy your Easter long weekend, and we'll see you next time on Middleware Friday.